glycemic index is a measure of the speed by which blood sugar levels rise after you eat a certain food. So that means that the lower the glycemic index of a food, the slower the food is digested and the slower the sugars enter the blood. In this episode, I'll be talking about different ways that you can improve the quality of your carbohydrates so that they have a better glycemic response so that you have lower blood sugar levels. Hi, my name is Shaista Zahiruddin and I am talking to you about how to prevent diabetes. In the last episode, I asked you to start eating more whole grains for at least four days out of your week. Now, what do you do for the remaining three days? Are you just going to eat white rice? Now, there are ways to improve the glycemic index and the quality of your white rice. Research actually shows that eating a low glycemic diet and exercise both resulted in a decreased insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is one of the reasons that diabetes happens. And these studies actually also showed that the same uh, decrease in insulin resistance was not seen on a regular diet and exercise program that did not use the glycemic index. That means that choosing lower glycemic foods is important. So how can we improve the quality of our grains? One, choose healthier types of rice. There are different types of rices. Now, long grain rice is better than a short grain rice but what is better than long grain rice is choosing a brown long grain basmati rice something that's even better than brown rice is parboiled rice or converted rice both of these rices absorb less water and that means that they take longer to digest and that's how the blood sugars are well controlled that's why choosing a parboiled rice or converted rice can improve your chances of controlling your blood sugar levels and reduce your risk of diabetes. And then number two, add vinegar while you're cooking rice. The vinegar adds acid and basically improves the quality of your rice. So the next time you're boiling rice, add a teaspoon of vinegar to the boiling water and this will help make your rice a lower glycemic rice. Also, make sure that you eat yogurt or raita when you are eating biryani or any other uh, main dish because yogurt adds the acid that will help lower the glycemic index of your meal. Another thing you can do is to add lemon to your gravies or at least have a tomato based gravy when you're eating a white rice. This will also add acid and lower the glycemic index of your rice. Do not overcook your rice. The longer you cook your rice, the more the rice will swell, the more water it will absorb and this will make it easy for your body to break it down quicker and the sugar will go into your blood faster. If you undercook your rice and let it be a little chewy, this will improve the glycemic index. So whenever you're making rice, pasta or noodles, make sure they are a little chewy and not too soft. The Italian name for that is called al dente. So you want to make sure you never overcook your food, especially your rice, noodles and pastas. Another bonus tip I'll give you is whenever you cook rice, make sure that you add extra water and drain that off when your rice is still a bit firm and then let your rice cook in its own steam. Don't eat foods that are too hot. When food is allowed to cool, it increases the resistant starch in it. It basically makes it less soluble and less digestible when you eat it and therefore that reduces the glycemic index. So whenever you cook your potatoes, make sure you boil them and then cool them before you eat. You can actually eat your potatoes cold. They are better 
in terms of health and glycemic index when they're cooled rather than when they're eaten hot. And same thing with rice and pasta. There's actually studies that show that when you cool rice in a refrigerator and then reheat it, it has a lower glycemic index than when you just cooked it and ate it fresh and hot. So it's better to allow your rice to get cool completely, especially in a refrigerator, and then reheat it before you eat your rice. So one of my tips for you is, especially when you're meal planning uh, for the week, make big batches over the weekend of your rice and refrigerate it, and then take out the portion that you want for that day and heat it, and that will really lower your glycemic index and eventually reduce your risk of diabetes. Also, the type of cooking matters. Adding oil to your rice actually improves its glycemic index. But when to add that oil? There's actually been a few studies done and it turns out that the type of oil doesn't matter. They have tested this with ghee, they've tested this with vegetable oil. It doesn't matter. My professional opinion for you is use olive oil, but more than the type of fat, the timing of adding that oil matters. So a pulao or a pilaf style, basically cooking your rice with oil and vegetables and meats is better than simply steaming your rice. But better than that is actually stir frying your rice. So when you stir fry the rice, it is first cooled and then reheated. And then when you add the oil, then it becomes even more lower in the glycemic index and it helps to reduce the blood sugar levels after your meal. So stir frying is the best way to eat if you have to eat rice. That's why if you made batch rice and then one day in the week you decide to put all your leftovers and stir fry it with the rice, that is the most desirable way to eat white rice. Start sprouting your grains or your rice. Sprouting means that when you leave your rice or your grain in water overnight, you will start to see little seedlings that grow out of that grain. Now you can't do that with white rice because in the last video I told you white rice has been removed of all its important parts. So no matter how long you leave your white rice in water, it will not grow a seedling. If you can't regrow your food and, and rice is coming from a plant, if you can't regrow your rice in your home, then is it really worth eating? Because if you take your cilantro or your mint leaves, even your garlic, and you put that in water, you will start seeing roots and leaves start sprouting. That is a sign that your food is alive and you can eat them because that is going to help you stay alive. But if a food doesn't grow, you aren't feeding yourself properly. By sprouting grains or even rice, you will have to start eating brown rice or wild rice. Because when you soak brown rice in water overnight, in one day or two days, depending on the weather, there will be small seedlings are sprouting out of the brown rice and that brown rice that sprouted grain or the sprouted brown rice is so many times healthier than your regular brown rice and 100 times healthier than regular white rice when a grain is sprouted it increases protein and a lot of the essential amino acids that our body needs it reduces gluten it increases fiber and the more fiber your food has the better digestion and better blood sugar control you will have even sprouting grains increases the b vitamins uh, the vitamin c the folate increases the availability of iron zinc calcium magnesium manganese potassium phosphorus and so many more antioxidants and phytochemicals that you would not have had if the grain was not sprouted. And it also re reduces the level of anti-nutrients such as phytic acid. So sprouting your grains is the best next level to eating whole grains. So I've mentioned different ways that you can improve 
the quality of your regular grains and your white rice and your starches and even potatoes. So try these things out. Put in the comments below which you've tried, which you've liked. And if you found any of these tips helpful, please remember to subscribe to my channel and please share this with as many friends as you can because the more we know, the better the quality of our foods will be. Thank you and I'll see you next week with another interesting video. Goodbye.